Robotic cars are used in many applications, ranging from heavy-duty assembly lines and warehouse logistics to precise equipment for fine operations. In this video, my friend and I built a unique model of a robotic car in order to see exactly how it works and to have an introduction into this field of robotics. For starters, our robotic car consists of three main moving elements, as can be seen in this model. There are two more secondary moving elements on which the motors are attached in order to perform the movement. But how exactly does it work? To rise and extend the arm and to close a claw, we improvise some linear actuators. An actuator transforms circular motion into linear motion. To do so, the motor is connected to a threaded rod that screws or unscrews a nut. As a result, the nut moves on a linear trajectory alongside the thread. The advantage of using a threaded rod and a nut is that it locks in position when the applied force stops. It significantly reduces the stress on a motor, resulting in less energy consumption. The only downside is the need for mobility. As for the claw, the components are entirely designed by us. Similar to the other two actuators, the difference is that the motor is fixed and the nut can move only along the thread. The nut support, the arms and the forearms, are connected with articulated joints too resulting in a parallel movement that widens the gap between the arm tips if the nut unscrews and vice versa. It is designed to hold anything from 1 to 60 mm. You can easily grab a tennis ball, a small bottle of water or a pen. But a robotic arm doesn't require just mechanical skills, you also need to find a suitable and efficient way to control it. So, we've used in this project an Arduino microcontroller with two motor drivers and a Bluetooth module. A design of the circuit schematic can be seen here. As for the software, we have designed an Android app with two joysticks, each with its XY axis. Every axis controls the direction and the speed of one motor. When the user moves the joysticks, the app sends the instructions to the Arduino, which interprets them and sends the correspondent signal to the motor drivers. This is the first model we've designed using 3D modeling software and it is rather simple since we only wanted to make the bracket for the motor as well as the way the motor connects to the arm with the threaded rod. We've also made the model for the second arm just to make an idea about the mobility. Moving on to the second design, this is the first axis of our robotic arm. Later in the video, we've printed and tested it. We introduced both parts to which the motor and the arm are connected, and the base on which this model is assembled. This model can lift to 1 kg, but it has reduced mobility because it can move just around the connector piece that attaches to the base. As you can see, the motor spins the threaded rod connected by a nut attached to the arm, thus performing the movement. After testing the second model, we've proceeded to make the second axis or arm by implementing the second motor and threaded rod. You can see that it isn't finished at the end of the arm because we still had to think about the claw. Meanwhile, while we were still debating on how to implement the claw, we added a rotary potentiometer to each joint between the first arm and the base connector, as well as between the first and second arm. These have the role of rendering the value of the angle formed by the components to be able to implement a program that makes the claw gripper parallel to the ground. In addition to this, they also have the role of stopping the motors if the moving parts do not move. We'll see why in the next design. In this design, we've implemented a type of stopper to limit the angle which can be formed by the mobile components, as we can see here. So, as I have said earlier, the potentiometers have an extra role. When the motor runs and the arm doesn't move, being blocked by the stopper, the potentiometer will detect and stop the movement. Finally, in this model, we finished the claw and the second arm. We've also implemented two motors, one that controls the movement of the claw gripper on the second arm, the other controls the opening and closing. Moreover, 
We've connected a potential meter to the joint between the arm and the claw gripper with the same roll, plus the algorithm that makes it parallel to the ground. As for our new and final element, the assembly of the claw has a motor with a threaded rod on which is fastened an element, implemented with a nut. It creates a rectilinear movement that opens and closes the arms of the mechanism. This is the final design, where we've made small changes to the entire robot. I made a new model for the base from which the robotic arm is fixed. It can be attached to other similar parts, and the robot can be positioned right in the middle of two such bases. We've made changes to the claw gripper, making it more solid. As for the last change, we've implemented a button as shown in the figure. When opening the claw gripper, if the button is pushed, the close arms reach the maximal angle, till the motor stops moving them. This is the design I've mentioned earlier, which we tested and tried with different weights. You've used a 1 liter bottle that has an approximate value of 1 kilogram. As you can see, this model can lift and put down the bottle without any struggle. Also, thanks to the mechanism that connects the motor to the arm, even if the objects it carries are too heavy, the arm won't draw from its position. After finishing design the 3D model, we've proceeded to print it. I recommend printing at home this robot because it might be really expensive otherwise because of the number of elements. In total, there are 27 elements and it required me 43 hours to print them. I have used PLA as filament and the total cost of all printing, if you use your 3D printer, should be around 6 euros, where the filament roll costs 20 euros. So even if the printing time takes too long, the price is much better than if you print it at the store. After printing all the components we've needed, we've proceeded to assemble the robot in this time-lapse video. With the design of the robotic arm printed and ready to go, all that is left is to test it with different objects and observe its functionality. From our tests, it can effectively lift up to 100 grams. But this robotic arm is by no means the best. It is just a unique design in which, instead of using pure mechanics like the lever, we have implemented linear actuators. In this part of the video, we tested all the functionality of the robot with objects of different lengths and widths.
Thank you for watching this video. If you like it, don't forget to subscribe and like this video. All support is well appreciated.